Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Dani and today I want to talk about the books that I read in September. In September I read four novels and six short stories, so I'm going to talk about all of them separately as if they were books, separate books. So I read a total of 10 books. The six short stories are part of the Far Reaches Amazon collection. They are available for Kindle Limited or Amazon Prime if you have it, and it's a collection of sci-fi stories that are imagining the space and like what's out there and what how humans would be in that situation. They're all very different from each other, but ca that's kind of the general vibe. There's a second collection that I read from Amazon. Uh, the first one was the Forward collection that I read in 2020. In that collection and also in this one, uh, they're all famous authors, famous highly published authors. For this one, some of them I had read from before and some I haven't, uh, some I want to read more from, so it's a great way to get to know an author's writing style and see what we vibe with. I don't have a lot to say, they're short stories. The shortest one is 28 pages, the longest one is 50 pages, so I really cannot share much uh, without spoilers, but if you've read them and if you're interested in seeing a full spoilery discussion about them, this was the book club pick for Patreon, so I have an exclusive video on Patreon going through all of my thoughts about all of the stories. But let's go through each of them in order that they appear on the page. So that's the order that I read. So the first one is How It Unfolds by James S.A. Corey, with the same author, same uh, author duo uh, who wrote the Expanse series. Uh, and this one is about these people who are cloned and then sent to populate other planets. And that's all I say, I'll say about the premise. I thought this was really okay. Uh, it was definitely not one of my favorites, uh, but it was not bad by any means. But it was okay. It was very confusing. That's, I think, the, the thing that I liked the least about it. It was just very confusing to follow the, the way that it was written. So I think... It was not very successful in exploring the themes that he wanted to explore, which are most mostly themes about how people can change and if the past really matters and depending on where you are and what you're doing in the future, like that, those kind of things. I don't think it was that successful. I didn't like the main character. I thought there was one thing that was that happened in the story that didn't make any sense for me, uh, but mostly it was just confusing. But it wasn't bad, it was three stars. The second one is Void by Veronica Roth, and this was one of my favorite, the second one uh, from top to bottom. Uh, and this is a murder mystery in space. This is about a spaceship that travels to a lot of different planets, and it discusses how time passes differently uh, it, if you're traveling in space. And on that spaceship, there's a murder that happens, and they go investigate who killed the man. I really liked this, I thought the investigation aspect was really a lot of fun. Uh, I especially liked that I was absolutely sure about who the killer was, and I was wrong. So I really liked that. And just overall, the, the way that Veronica Ross writes short stories, I typically enjoy, so I would gladly read more short stories by her in the future. I thought it was just very well done, entertaining, but at the same time, deep discussions that I was emotionally invested in. The next one was Falling Bodies by Re Rebecca Roanhorse, who wrote uh, Black Sun, the Black Sun series. I have not read that yet, but I kind of want to now. Uh, I really like her writing style, and I like, again, the themes that she was exploring in this story, but I did not like the ending, and I cannot say <laughs> what happened, but this is following this boy who's adopted slash taken by an alien race when he was young, and he grew up there, and things happened. I cannot say much, but I really like how that was told, and her own story being Native American and having grown up with white parents. That was just very personal to her, and I really enjoyed it, but I did not like the, the ending, and I thought it was just too short for what the story was trying to say. I would gladly read a whole novel about that story if that was turn into a novel, I think it would be amazing, but for me it was just too short for what it was. And then we have The Long Game by Anne Lackey, who wrote uh, Ancillary Justice and the whole trilogy, uh, which I have not read. And The Long Game is about an alien creature that has to deal with humans being on its planet, and a lot of discussions about life and about death also, and I really enjoyed it. I think the way that it was narrated by this alien creature was perfect and it was just so, so charming and delightful and I loved being in that alien's head because I think it was very well done 
but I was a little bit confused about a lot of things as the story went. Uh, I don't think I got everything <laughs> that she was trying to say, but it was amazing. I really liked it. It was one of my favorites as well, and it was just a de delightful experience. The next one was my least favorite of all, which is just Out of Jupiter's Reach by Naya Carrefour. I read The Bainty by this author before and I really enjoyed it, so I was very disappointed by not liking this one at all. Uh, and this was one of the most liked on Patreon, like for everyone that read the, the stories, this was one that people, most people liked a lot and I didn't. I was definitely the unpopular opinion. So if you're interested and if you like the author, do go for it, because I definitely an unpopular opinion for me but i just don't get the point of the story this in the story we're following the it's the main character is sort in first person i'm if i'm not forgetting but we're following this woman who is sent to space on the spaceship that can that can change according to her like it's a symbiotic relationship with this main character and there are other people who also went in that same way and they're all like meeting after five years being in space and that this whole thing happens well not not much happens it's a very quiet story but that it's this whole experience of them meeting and getting to know each other and i don't see the point of the story i don't think it was again I don't think the themes that the author was trying to explore were, were well done uh, for for me. I, I, I don't get it. Uh, and I was just very disappointed and I hate all the characters. I don't have to like the characters to like a story, but I think in this case I was supposed to at least understand why they were doing what they're doing and I don't. Like I just did not like the story. I gave it two stars. I really like the idea of the ships that can change, but that's pretty much it. I didn't like the characters, I didn't like the plot, and I didn't like a lot of the decisions that the author made in the story. They just don't make sense for me. I, it was, it was not for me. And the last one is Slow Time Between Stars, Slow Time Between the Stars, I think that's it, uh, by John Scalzi, which I have read uh, The Kaiju Preservation Society and gave five stars. And I want to read a lot of his other books because they all sound Real, not all of them, the ones that I've seen sound uh, very interesting. And I gave this story five stars as well. This was definitely my favorite. And this one are following an AI robot ship uh, that's going to space with the goal of finding a planet to make him to repopulate it so humans can live in it. It's this whole thing. You'd have to read it. It's the shortest one, it's 28 pages, and I definitely recommend it. it just so amazing again being in the this logical robots robots head and the way that it makes it the, it makes decisions and the decisions that it makes is makes just a lot of sense for me and it's it just sad and melancholic uh, but at the same time very logical and just amazing i really loved it it was the exact type of story that i like uh for sci for this type of sci-fi short stories so I really enjoyed that and I would definitely 100% recommend it. So that's it for the short stories that I read. Now I have four books to talk about. The first one that I finished before I even read all those stories was That of Winter by Darcy Coates. So I've heard really great things about how she writes horror, but I think this is one of the least horror-ish books for, by this author. Uh, but for me, it was, it was horror. <laughs> I was too horror. I'm not very well versed in horror books. For me, this one was horror, and I really loved it. I think I gave it four stars. Yeah, but it definitely surprised me in how much I enjoyed it and how much how how atmospheric it was. Uh, this is a story about this group of people who are go they're on a bus going to this lodge on on a snowy mountain to just spend a few weeks there. But the bus gets stopped on the road because there's a tree that fell, and they are stuck on this cabin in the middle of the snowy mountain and people start dying. I figured out the review. I don't know if it's a review. I don't know if it's supposed to be a review that anyone, no one knows about, but I figured out like what was happening very early on by like the first or second chapter, but that still did not make me lose it, like lose the enjoyment for this book because the way that things were happening and because I knew or at least I was pretty sure about what was happening. I still wanted to try to figure out how all of that was happening. I was very pleased and very proud of myself by the end, but there were still a few reviews that I did not put together or some that I honestly would not be able to because we didn't have enough information on, but a lot of it I figured out, but it still was an amazing read. 
I will definitely read more by this author. If you have any that you recommend, let me know. Uh, this was amazing. It was horror in the sense of not only the atmosphere, because that was pretty well done. If I was reading this during winter, I would not want to go <laughs> out on the snow uh, while reading it, because there were a lot of things that I was... It was very clear on how that could happen. But also there was a lot of gore. There was a lot of ways that people died or that people interacted that was... It was horrific. And it was just a really good time. And I finally read Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone by Benjamin Stevenson. Finally, because it has been on my TBRs for so long and I've been wanting to read it for so long. And this was 4.5 4, 4 stars. I rounded up to 5 stars. I had a great time. This is basically a love letter to Golden Age mystery, like Agatha Christie, which I love. So the way that the story is told is just phenomenal. It's very meta. Uh, and right in the beginning, the first chapter, the, the prologue, I think, uh, the main character is telling us the story. He says that I'm not gonna lie to you at any point. Everything that I'm saying is true. I'm not a reliable narrator. And to prove that to you, here are all the pages where someone is going to die in this book. And that was a lot of fun because at some point in the story, we're like, oh, did this character die or not? And the, the main, the, the narrator is like, oh, check the page number. So we would see if the if someone that that's being mentioned is that or not. So it's just very meta, it's very talking to the reader. If you don't like that, you will not like this book because this is all that it is. It is talking to us. And it was just a lot of fun. I had the most fun with it. There were some parts that dragged a little bit, but at the end I was smiling and just... It was just amazing. I'm still not sure if I'm going to read the sequel. Although I love this, I don't know if I want to read a sequel because I need to be in the right mood for this kind of book otherwise it's just it feels too gimmicky but it was just amazing what the experience that I had I think I was in the right mood for this book and it worked really well for me. The actual plot of this book is that the main character is going with his family to a lodge in a snowy mountain same as with the other book uh, but in this one there is a body that appears and they are trying to figure out who the killer is there are other deaths in the story like he listed in the first in the prologue uh, but it's a very different vibe from that uh that of winter this is much more humorous but still during intense scenes it's not a cozy mystery it's sometimes a cozy mystery sometimes it's not a cozy mystery it's just a great blend of everything and i really love it and then i listened to two audiobooks that i was not planning to read anytime soon but I did uh, so the first one was Pray for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers the, again this has been on my TBRs for so long and I have not read it and I've never been on the mood to pick it up because I think the first book this is a sequel to a sound for the wild, wild built Sound for the Wild Build. And I think the first book worked so well on its own that I didn't want the sequel but because I liked it I went up and, and got the sequel and the audiobook was great. I, I think it was a great decision for me to grab the audiobook. I gave this four stars. I think it was it was funny because in the first book, reading it physically, I liked the monk more than the robot. And I didn't like the robot much in the first book. But in this one, the monk was very annoying to me, at least in the in the audiobook. Uh, and the robot was just amazing. I just loved it so much. I again I finished this book. I think it it ended well. But if there is a sequel, I will read it for the robot. I can't tell you what the plot of this is, although there's not a lot of plot to either of these books. It's mostly a monk and a robot going out in the woods and talking to people and experiencing things and talking about life. But it's a cozy sci-fi. It's just a vibes, you know? If you want something cozy and just... This is very fall-like. I would definitely recommend it for fall. It was an amazing read. There's not a lot of plot to it, but it's great. Only one book to go. And I'm pretty sick today, so it's been hard to film this video. But we can do it. One book to go. And the last one is The Project by Courtney Summers. I've had this book for a long time. I think right about when it was released. Uh, because I loved Sadie by the same author. And I wanted to read this. This was about a cult. Uh, and I enjoy cult stories. But I didn't pick this up for a long time. Because I've been told, or I've seen on videos or on Goodreads, that this is YA. This is not YA. And f the fact that it was that I thought it was YA was what was making me not want to read it because I was just not in the vibe for that kind of story, for like a young characters type of story. 
But this is not it. This is, both characters here are adults, and this is definitely an adult book. Uh, this is a story of two sisters. We're mostly following one of the sisters, but sometimes there are chapters with the other one. One of the sisters is in this cult uh, that she really believes in, and there's this whole thing about what the cult is, and then the other sister is trying to get her out. Uh, and the, it's the whole experience. This was, again, really surprising to me, just because I did not expect to like this book so much. I gave it four stars, was not five stars, but it still, it was really well written, really well narrated for the audiobook. Although at some points I would get confused which sister is which and which one we're, we're following at the time, because it, it jumps around in time a lot, and with audio for me it's a little bit hard to follow sometimes, but it was still really good. There are a lot of intense and graphic scenes here, not sexual scenes, more violent scenes that I did not expect, and there's some adult situations also here that I did not expect because I thought it was in a YA book. So this was really good. This surprised me a lot. It's very atmospheric. It really grabs you and like I really wanted to see to know what was going on and how it was going to be solved because there were some parts that I thought the author was going in a way that I wasn't agreeing at all, but it was just very well written and I would definitely recommend. If you thought this was YA also, it's not. It's an adult book about cults, about following two sisters. It's very intense and the audiobook is great. So I for sure also recommend this. And that's it for the books that I read in September. I read a lot considering that I was away for 11 days and I didn't read almost anything uh, when I was away, but I'm very happy with all the books that I read. All of those were 4 and 4.5 stars and for the short stories. It is expected that I would not like all of them, but it's still my rate, my average rating was 3.8. So I'm very happy with that. Let me know if you read any of these books and which Darcy Coates book would you recommend for me next? If you watch until the end, leave me a robot emoji for the robot in this book. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like and subscribe. And thank you so much for joining me. Bye!